Welcome to the Arlington Catholic Herald podcast. We've got stories you won't find anywhere else. I'm Zoe Murray, staff writer, and what you're hearing is the sound of hockey, with a twist. The players are members of the Washington Blind Hockey Club, and they're using a regulation blind hockey puck as they practice at the MedStar Capitals Iceplex in Arlington. The metallic rattle allows 31-year-old Charlie Mitchell, a parishioner of Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church in Alexandria, to continue playing a sport he loved in high school, even after becoming legally blind. We're going to hold battery a test, and at the end of it, he said, you know, I think you have a degenerative retinal disease, and you're, you're going to progressively lose your vision. And I was not prepared for that at all. So, I, you know, it was kind of like a, a million questions start popping up in your mind. And, I was in, just finished my first year of law school. You know, how am I, am I going to be able to still read? Am I going to be able to practice law? Um, we were, only had been married for a year. You know, how's this going to affect our marriage? Am I going to be able to drive a car? You know, the whole thousand questions started popping into your mind. First, it was really the night vision that I lost and, um, you know, tracking you know, anything moving like a ball or so. You know, the first thing that I had to stop doing was stop driving. Um, as time went on, it got more and more difficult to like navigate through the metro station. Um, you know, I was bumping into people. Um, I started to have more and more trouble. I can still read visually, but it's it's kind of very tedious and slow, um, so it started to impact my job. One of the partners I work with, she sits a couple offices down from me at work, um, went to the Air Force Academy with a guy who started the blind hockey program here in DC. So she actually, she knew obviously I was having um, vision problems. She had no idea that I had played hockey as a kid and played pretty seriously. And one day we were just in the break room at work and she said, you know, I, I was just out yesterday. I took my kids out to check out this blind hockey program, um, and I, you know, thought that might be something you were interested in. You should go check it out sometime. And it, uh, my first reaction, like a lot of people, was that that sounds, you know, crazy. What, what in the world is blind hockey? Because at that point, I had, I hadn't played in ten years, and with my vision, I thought I'd, I'd never played hockey again. Um, so, and she had no idea that I had played hockey. So. It was just kind of a, a pretty incredible um, coincidence that she just happened to mention to me in the break room. And shortly after that, I came out, checked out a practice, uh, started skating with the team, and never looked back. I've kind of been full bore ever since. Head coach here um, in D.C. also um, up until recently was the assistant coach for USA Blind Hockey, so he encouraged me to try out for that. I went down to the USA Disabled Hockey Festival, which is an annual event they have every year, and as part of that, I was able to participate in the tryout for the USA Blind Hockey team. Uh, from there, I got invited to the team's training camp, which they do it's a week every summer up in Utica, New York. Um, they partner, there's a, it's called CAVI, the Central Association for the Blind and Visual Impaired, which is uh, a big training center for people with visual impairment in Utica. Uh, so we do a lot partnering with them during the week. And from that training camp, they pick the team for the year. So I was fortunate to be selected for the 2019 2020 national team. Probably the biggest difference is the puck, so it's about twice as big as a normal hockey puck, uh, so that it's easier to see. It's also made out of metal and it has ball bearings in it, so that it's it's very loud when it's moving um, and you can track it audibly rather than visually. That was probably one of the biggest adaptations for me. It took me several months before I was able to pick up the puck on my stick by just listening to it rather than seeing it. Um, but yeah, it, you eventually develop that ability that you get pretty good at, at just tracking uh, audibly. 
the other major adaptation is there's a pass whistle so in order to alert the goalie that he might have a shot coming at him uh, the offensive team has to complete at least one pass in the forward zone and when that happens the ref blows a special whistle that has a different sound so that alerts the lower sighted defenseman and the goalies uh, that a, a pass has been completed and that a shot might be coming their way uh, so they can kind of get set and get ready for it. Um, beyond that, it, in, we don't do it at our practice here on a regular basis, but in competition, the nets are a foot shorter than a typical net, and that's just to give the goalies a, a better chance to stop the puck because if if you're shooting the puck high up in the corners, they don't really have too much of a chance to stop it, so they uh, lower the net down by a foot. And then from a strategy standpoint, it's really communication is way more important than inside hockey. Um, you really have to know your line mates. You have to know what their vision is. Um, because, you know, Some people have no central vision. Some people have no peripheral vision and only central vision. And, all kinds of variations in between. Um, so a lot of it relies on communication, letting the other players on your line know where you are so that they can pass you the puck, um, communicating what's going on. You know, if you turn the puck over to the other team, your teammates don't know that because they can't see it. So you got to be audibly letting them know. Uh, we have a bunch of different code words that we use for different scenarios. Uh, communicating to the goalie where the puck is on the ice, you know, left corner, right corner, behind the net. Before I started playing blind hockey, I was kind of in the mindset of um, limiting myself. It just kind of, I would go into things with the assumption that I couldn't do it because of my vision. Um, and play, start playing blind hockey and, you know, seeing how. Yes, we have some adaptations, but it really it's not too different from normal sighted hockey. And it's still um, quite competitive and quite fast. Um, so it's really changed my mindset of what I can and cannot do and just kind of challenged me to not shut myself off to things because I assume that I can't do them. I'd certainly, I'm thrilled that ever since I started playing blind hockey, uh, daughter Ellie has just been totally obsessed with hockey and, and now wants to be a hockey player. And uh, I'm really excited to teach her how to skate and hopefully have a, a couple hockey players follow in my footsteps. To read more about Charlie and to watch a video, of the Washington Blind Hockey Club practicing, go to arlingtoncatholicherald.com and search for blind hockey, or read it on the front page of our January 9th print issue. For more informative and inspiring stories, go to catholicherald.com slash subscribe. One last thing, if you're enjoying this podcast, please rate and review it, then send it to a friend. Thanks for listening. This podcast was produced by Jim Solitsky and reported by Zoe Murray. Production assistance by Mary Stakira Lopez.